All righty. Well, uh, yeah, my name is Alexander Bryan. I'm here uh, presenting on behalf of the Science Commons Initiative. I'm super excited to tell you all about the work that we've been doing to support Boink uh, development and the Boink community as well. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with us, uh, the SCI is a nonprofit organization. Um, we have an all volunteer board on that board. We've got uh, myself, we got Boink developer Vitaly Kashra, uh, some of the lead developers from Gridcoin um, and the hosts of Boink Radio as well as some other folks. Um, and our mission is to is to find and fund technology that connects the public uh, with the scientific process so we can kind of rebuild that bridge of trust and participation uh, between the public and science right if you if you're invested in if you're if you participate in a, in a system in a scientific system you're more likely to trust its outcomes you're more likely to care about scientific research and you're more likely to for example take vaccines so it's a, you know there's a there's a continuing growing rift between the public and science we want to help patch that up. And we see Boink as one of the primary tools for doing that. Um, it's a really great way to kind of connect these two worlds. So this year, we applied for some grant funding uh, from Gitcoin, and we currently have about $10,000 allocated towards uh, Boink development, and we expect the number to grow by the end of the year. Um, but I think, you know, bigger than the dollar amount, uh, more significant is that we have a group of people who are longtime Boink users, who are passionate about the software, who want to contribute to it and see it grow and, and grow its impact. Um, and, they're, and they're meeting on a regular basis and they're, they're getting a lot of work done. So I'm very, very excited to see what, what comes out of all this. Um, so before talking about what we want to do, let's talk about why we want to do it. Um, Boink has a long-term trend of shrinking user base. And I'm sure that none of these challenges listed here are going to be uh, news to anyone here. Uh, here's a slide from David's presentation uh, from last year, maybe the year before at the Boink workshop, uh, illustrating pretty well uh, the shrinking user base issue. Um, and so that's on the user side, but on the research side as well, um, Boink is just not well known in scientific research circles um, when it absolutely should, should be, right? It's open source, uh, it's, it's, it's low cost for academic departments to use, there's a huge network of volunteers who will do your computing for free. I mean, the list goes on in terms of Boink's advantages for, for academic research, but it just isn't well known. Um, and it's, I, think, I think it's really a shame. Um, and one of the reasons it's not well known is that there's a lot of accessibility hurdles uh, in order to get started with Boink, whether you're looking at it from the uh, the end of crunchers and users or from the end of researchers. Um, David has pretty well articulated some of these hurdles um, and including uh, the hurdle of getting started with research that scientists are scientists, right? They're not system administrators. They're not just going to download some software and start up a, a LAMP server uh, to do a couple of work units. Um, and so, and on top of that, once they have that, they're not going to be able to or want to spend a much of time getting volunteers for their project. And so Science United really eliminated that first major hurdle there, um, which is very exciting. Um, and one of the reasons that accessibility is low is that there's a low limited pool of, of developer talent. Um, there's only a couple of developers who work on Boink. Um, and they do an excellent job. Um, but the smaller your development team and the bigger your software, the more time you spend on bug fixes and maintenance and the less time you spend on future kind of forward thinking development um, and, and adding new features and that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the primary reasons for a limited pool developer talent is that there's no sustainable funding mechanism for Boink and, and there never really has been. Um, it seems like it's mostly been funded through a kind of a patchwork of NSF grants um, and, and David's uh, sure, sure will and determination and, and stubbornness uh, to keep the project alive and, and useful for all the people that it's useful to. Um, so the first thing that we really want to tackle is this uh, funding issue for Boink. Um, so we have our Boink Development Fund. Uh, this enables people to, to directly support Boink Development, um, and they can donate to us. That gives them a, a fun tax deduction, um, or they can they can put money directly on bug bounties, which is going to be the primary way that we're spending these development funds. So for those of you who are not in software, essentially what we do for a bug bounty is we say, you know, we have $200, we have $500, whatever the amount is, and we want to get this feature implemented. We want to get this bug fixed in the software. We want to have some code written. And whoever can produce that code and bring it to us first, they get the value of that bounty. Um, and so uh, you, you, you users can contribute directly to bounties that matter to them. And so this, this bug bounty system gets has a couple of benefits. One is that it's a great way for us to put funds towards development before we're at a place where we have sustainable enough funding to hire full-time developers. Um, and because users are able to contribute directly to these bug bounties, um, and I don't, by users, I don't mean just crunchers, but also project admins, anyone who benefits from the point software, 
we're getting real time live quality feedback on what are the features that are important to users? What are the things that matter to them? So we don't need to do a survey. We don't need to guess as to what users want. We can see it right there in the bug bounties. Um, and also cri cri critically, this attracts new development talent, right? So we're using bounty source for this uh, and there, there, there's developers there and they're working on all sorts of projects and they're gonna see, oh, there's a $250 bounty on what seems like a really simple bug. Let me let me look into that. Let me let me look at the code and see what I can do. Um, and when they're doing that, they're going to have an experience that everyone here has had, which is they're going to say, "What this boink thing? This is this is kind of cool. I can see this this project having a big impact. I want to get more involved. I want to start crunching. I want to start a project. Uh, I want to start contributing more to the code." Um, and so basically, it's it's the boink development fund. Yes, it's about getting the development done but it's also about raising the profile of Boink among people who have the talent and skills to contribute code to it. Um, so that's the development side. Of course, there's also the outreach and community side. Um, one of the big hurdles for Boink is just general visibility. Um, so we want to develop a set of modern promotional materials for Boink so that anyone who likes the software, anyone who's passionate about it can have what they need to go promote Boink in, you know, in their place of worship, uh, in their academic uh, institution, in their workplace, in their community. Um, so we have some business cards we, that we uh, made, talk about that in the next slide, but you can see here a screenshot from the bug bounty that we used uh, to fund those. Um, and of course, it also means uh, supporting community infrastructure, the, the way that people find out about and get engaged with Boink outside of the software. Uh, so we provide live streaming infrastructure for Boink Radio, um, and we do a lot of online promotion as well. Um, and last month we had a, a Reddit AMA post. We had about fifty thousand views on that, talking about Boink. And that's not that's not a huge number in terms of general promotion and advertising. But I think in terms of Boink's general advertising reach, it's a pretty significant bump. Um, also, right now, one of our board members is a, in Denver at a DSI conference, talking to people kind of on the bleeding edge of science technology um, about what Boink uh, can do for them and their and their research projects. We also did the Boink census. I believe you all saw the presentation on that earlier. Um, and of course, you know, whenever we're promoting uh, Boink software, we're inherently promoting the Boink projects, right? Because it's much easier to get somebody interested in the software if there's an, an, a, an adjacent interest that they have, right? Oh, you're interested in space? Did you know that you can find pulsars with Einstein at home using your laptop, right? We have, once we have that connection and start that conversation, then we can get them interested in Boink. So just, you know, researchers, uh, project admins, when you post on your website, we're gonna take those posts, we're gonna run with them, we're gonna get them all over social media, hopefully get some more eyes in your project and some more crunchers as well. Um, and so this is all talking about the visibility on the end of the end user, but also we need to raise visibility, of course, among researchers uh, and institutions. Um, and I, someone asked a question earlier about how kind of the, the science communication end uh, of one promotion should work. Uh, we, we would love to hear from projects about how we can help with the science communication part so that you can focus on the research and development and we can help get the word out about your project and what you're doing. Um, so one of these kind of promotional efforts that we have are these Boink business cards. This is going to be part of a larger design package. Um, but basically, we have a business card designed for each Boink project. The project can, can choose the taglines here. And we should have these released by the end of the month. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from the, all the projects on them. But um, this is the front of the card. Back of the card has a QR code and a link to the project website. These are going to be made available at cost uh, on our website through our web store, which ships internationally. Uh, and they should they'll be available to anybody who wants to promote Boink. Uh, and if you need to modify them for some particular purpose, or you want to get them printed locally, no problem. The designs are openly licensed. They'll be available for download as well. Um, so this will be, again, part of a larger design package. Another effort uh, we're, we launched, which is that someone was asking about this in the chat, uh, is the SCI web store. So you can buy merch from your favorite Boink projects here, t-shirts, hoodies, backpacks, you name it, we probably have it. Uh, and so 50% of the proceeds from these purchases go to the projects and then 50% goes to our Boink Development Fund. Um, and it's also another tool in your toolbox as a project admin to help incentivize user participation. Um, in the census, people were asking about ways to reward users, right? There's a couple of different methods and this is another one that you can, that you can utilize. Uh, so if you're gonna do a compute sprint, you need a bunch of work units completed, you can say, all right, Top five crunchers this month, you get a hoodie with our logo on there. So if you're a project admin and you'd like to be involved, please do shoot us an email. We'll get you on here. And if you're a user and you'd like to see your favorite project on here, uh, ask your project. They're the ones who have to who have to sign off on it. So um, so this is so far we've been talking about how to raise visibility and accessibility among users. 
Um, but we also have, we also need to raise visibility among researchers and among academic institutions. Um, so we have this promotion campaign basically ready to roll. There's a couple finishing touches that we're putting on it, but essentially um, we're gonna reach out to every university in the United States, not just every university, every physics department, every chemistry department, every biology department. And we're gonna give them a letter, we're gonna give them this nice flyer, and it's gonna link back to this website pictured here, which links back of course to the Boink Berkeley website. Um, but this is just a very streamlined pitch for researchers, for academic departments. What is Boink? Why is it useful to you, right? Because Boink has a million cool features. There's tons of cool stuff we could teach you about Boink. But right now we're only gonna focus on its pitch as a compute provider, right? Boink is free and open source. You can use it and modify it as you wish. Boink has a large community and ecosystem. You're in, you're, there's lots of good places for user support. It's free to use. You get your compute done essentially for free. Um, so really hammering these points home about why would you choose Boink over AWS, over HEC Condor, over these kind of other competitors in the, in the distributed computing uh, marketplace. Uh, so we're very excited to be getting that one off the ground. So I won't take up too much of y'all's time, but basically project admins, uh, if you're interested in working with us, if we can help you with science communication, uh, please do come talk to us. Uh, and we wanna hear from you about what kind of your pain points are with the Boeing software so we can put money towards uh, development efforts and bug bounties for those. So uh, uh, there's a link here, QR codes from monthly newsletter. Uh, if you want to keep up on what we're doing, it's a great way. Uh, it's a low traffic email list. We also got our Discord if you're interested in more day to day. And of course, do check out the web store. Uh, get yourself some some merch. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a interesting uh, proposal. You guys are definitely up to a lot. Uh, my, uh, I guess I missed part of it. My computer took the opportunity to crash right at the beginning. So uh, I'll take a look at the recording by the way as a point for everyone um talks will be on uh youtube um on uh, the uh there's a point workshop youtube channel uh, i'll post links for that later uh, meanwhile any we have a question here from bill bauer there we go hi uh you said you were reaching out to all us universities and their departments, have you considered uh, looking at uh, contacting museums? Uh, anecdotally, my sister's working at the Field Museum, and I think they've been doing some research through Zooniverse there for crunching some of the data. That's that's a really that's a really good idea. I don't think we'd even uh, could even thought about doing museums, but yeah, that, that's certainly a good place to reach out to as well. And, you know, after we do this first, big promo sprint to universities, we kind of want to reevaluate and see like, do we want to start promoting to other types of institutions? Do we want to start um, doing more international promotion and kind of seeing seeing what feedback we get from that? Um, but our hope is we're going to get at least one one new Boeing project out of that uh, that people can will be excited to crunch. So 